Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Nielsen. Today we're going to talk about sequence of events. What is sequence of events? Well, sequence of events, as it says here on the screen, did you see this up here? Is putting events of a story in order. When they happen. All the steps we follow to do something. Today we will read a book about two sisters that want to build a snowman and discuss the sequence of events they use to build this snowman. What do they do first? What happens next? And finally, what are the results? Let's continue learning a little bit about sequence of events. Our story is Building a Snowman by Meg Gartner. When we talk about sequence of events, we use the following terms to describe the steps we follow. These words are called transition words. First, what do we do first? Next, what is the second thing to do? Then, if there's more steps, we should describe the third step and maybe sometimes even the fourth step in the sequence of events. And last, finally, what is the last step to finish the sequence or what happens at the end of the story? So today we're gonna to read the story and then we'll talk about the sequence of events in the story by using these terms right here, first, next, then, and last. Are you ready? Let's just close the screen here so we can get up our story. As soon as I put that down here, and then I will put up our story right here. Here it is, building a snowman. It's a sequence and story. Ellie wants to build a snowman. That's gonna be the character in the book. First, she makes a small snowball. Then she rolls the snowball to make it bigger. Think now, why is she making that snowball bigger? I bet you know, we'll find out in the story. What will happen next? Here's the title of the story, Building a Snowman, Meg Garner. That's the, do you remember? That's correct, the author, the person who writes the book. Let's begin, snow time. Ellie puts on her winter coat and mittens. She pulls on her hat. She runs outside. It snowed yesterday. That means it is time to build a snowman. When it snows out by us, do you like to go out and play with the snow and build a snowman? I know I do, and I like that. I used to do that with my children. Ellie starts by making a snowball. Look at what Ellie's wearing. She's wearing some, a coat, a hat, and gloves. Why do you think she has to wear all that? That's right, to stay warm and dry in the snow because the snow is wet. At first, Ellie's sister just watches, but now she wants to help too. Ellie and her sister push the snowball. The snowball picks up more snow. It gets bigger. After a while, they have a huge ball of snow. What do you think they're gonna use that huge ball of snow as? That's right, this will be the snowman's base. They work together because it was a lot of work. And to make to work together, it's like teamwork. It makes it a little bit easier, right? It's also a lot of fun. So now they have the snowman's base. That's the bottom of the snowman, right? Once the base is done, Ellie and her sister begin making the snowman's middle. That's like the body of the snowman. Many snowmen have three parts. The middle goes on the top of the base. You can also make a snowman, a snow kid, or even a snow animal. In this case, they're going to make a snowman. Now this is, the base was very heavy. Now they made another snowball that's pretty big and also heavy too. So guess what? It's because the snow is heavy, it is hard to lift the snowball. Ellie and her sister need help. Just then, their dad joins them outside and they're gonna ask daddy for help. You need wet snow that packs together well to build a snowman and the wetter it is and the heavier it gets when you pack it together really tight. So daddy's gonna help them pick up that snowman, snowball. As soon as it's ready, Ellie's dad lifts the big snowball. He puts it on top of the snowman's base. Ellie and her sister help too. Do you notice a fun fact right here? The tallest snowman ever was a, as tall as a 20 adults standing on top of each other. Boy, that's a big, big snowman, right? Now here we have the snowman's base and we have the middle of the snowman. The sisters work together and try not to knock over the snowman. Next, Ellie and her sister add snow to the snowman. They want each part to be round like a ball, so they add more snow and pack it all as round as they can. They want the snowman to look good. Finally, it is time to make the snowman's head. Ellie makes a snowball while her sister watches. It is smaller than the snowman's base and middle, and that's gonna be the snowman's head. When the head is done, Ellie could lift that one. She lifts it 
She can carry it by herself. She brings it to the rest of the snowman. Here's another fun fact. More than 12,000 snowmen were built during a festival in Japan. There were more snowmen than people. At last, now that's the final step, the snowman is done. For the final touches, Ellie adds thin branches for her arms, her sister brings leaves for the snowman's eyes and mouth, Ellie and her sister hug their new snowy friend. Many snowmen have a carrot as a nose. You could use whatever you'd like for a nose too. And that's the end. And those were the sequence of events to build a snowman. It was a fun book to read, help us learn how to build a snowman. And now Mrs. Nielsen is going to show you some pictures I have here of the sequencing of, of things that happened in the story. What did Ellie and her sister do first? First, they made the big bottom of the snowball, the big snowball of the snowman. That's called the base, right? The base of it, right there. You see that? That was the first step. Next, what do they do? They made the body, which was another ball of snow, a little bit smaller than the base. Then they make the head. Now they have finally three parts all together. One, two, three. First, next, and last. And now they have what looks like a snowman. Now they're gonna use sequence events again to decorate the snowman and make it look more like a snowman, of course. So what do they do? First, they make some eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and they put it on the head of the snowman. Next, they add some arms or twigs to the snowman, and they even add um, some earmuffs on top of him here, you could see. Then they put those earmuffs on, see? And finally, they give him a nice big scarf, right? Now, we might not have seen all that in the story, but it's pretty much the same thing, same idea. You could decorate your snowman using sequence of events and using any objects you'd like for the eyes, nose, mouth, a hat, and the final touch might be a scarf to keep him nice and warm in the winter. Now, Mrs. Nielsen is going to send you some papers that you could do at home to sequence this, to sequence of the event of snowman. You see these pictures here? These are pictures that show the steps that you use first, next, and what happens after that, and then and finally. And you're gonna take these pictures, cut them apart, and put them on this sheet, how to build a snowman. What do you have to do first? Which one comes first? Which one comes next? And then next again, then this one, and finally the last step where you have a complete snowman. And if you have at home some Play-Doh, if you have some Play-Doh at home, what you could do is make a snowman yourself, like Mrs. Nielsen did. You see the snowman I have here? I use some Play-Doh. It doesn't even have to be white Play-Doh. It could be any color just to have fun trying to practice building a snowman. And what I did is I first made the base, next I made the middle, finally I made the head. And I have a three-part snowman. And then I did more sequencing of events by putting on some decorations with Play-Doh too. I first made the eyes, nose, and mouth. Then I stuck some toothpicks on the sides for his arms with a little bit of Play-Doh for his hands, or mittens if you'd like to call them. And finally, I put some earmuffs that I made for him. And it came kind of cute. And I think he's, it was kind of fun to do, and you might like to do that too. So if you decide to do this, please take a picture and send it to us. We'd like to see the fun you're having building a snowman with Play-Doh. I hope you have fun and I hope you learned how to sequence events and follow the steps so that you could do a project. Or when you read a book to retell the story, you could tell us what happened first, what happens next, then what happens, and finally what's at the end of the story. And that's what we did today. I hope you have fun. Please don't forget to send us pictures and your work that you do. Bye-bye now.